to another video and good morning. It's, uh, well, it's not that early. It's like 7.45. I'm late for work because I'm so tired. Um, I'm 34 weeks pregnant, 34 weeks and four days pregnant, and um, I'm just getting a little tired now. I really didn't have too many um, pregnancy symptoms until just like I started that 34 weeks. So well, other than gestational diabetes, which is what this um, video is about. This is uh, what I eat in a day with gestational diabetes. And um, these foods that I've been eating throughout the day have helped me control it. And like I said, I'm 34 weeks and four days and I have not had um, any issues so far that are related to you know gestational diabetes my my baby is right on track as far as growth and everything um, then there's you know some other things like my amniotic fluid is is appropriate um, all those things so anyway I thought that I would make this video because when I was first diagnosed I wasn't sure how I was going to balance eating healthy and being starving all the time because I'm growing a baby inside of me so I have eaten healthy in the past or been on diets or whatever made lifestyle changes but I'm not necessarily done a low carb diet I've just done more of a clean healthy diet um, rather than paying attention to or specifically focusing on low carb and with gestational diabetes that is what the goal is um, low carb well luckily the keto diet is like the new fad right now so there are a ton of keto recipes out there and keto is extremely low carb um, that you that I have been able to you know pull from recipes and stuff so that has definitely helped but you obviously need some carbs your baby needs carbs to develop properly and this is not you know having gestational diabetes in some cases isn't as extreme you know you don't you, you can't eat as extreme low carb as like a keto diet is however you still want to control it um, so I am an insulin dependent gestational diabetic right now I am very resistant at night so I have had to take insulin at bedtime to keep my blood sugar low at night which is very frustrating to me because that's I can't control that there's nothing and really you can't control it all at all it has to do with the placenta um, you can't control the hormone that the placenta emits that is causing all of this so um, you know really you can't control any of it but in my mind I feel like I can at least help by controlling my food intake but at bedtime there's no control there so um, I'm really resistant insulin resistant at nighttime so I do have to take insulin at night I have had to continually increase my insulin um, almost every week to keep up with my to keep up with my high blood sugar blood sugar levels after fasting um, but I've been good with my meals because I really have been focusing on eating healthy or eating low carb and exercising and combining you know carbs with protein and as well as trying to get enough rest so anyway now that I've rambled on for four minutes <laughs> um, this is a what I eat in a day with gestational diabetes I still am insulin dependent at nighttime and I may end up having to take insulin before meals as my pregnancy progresses because that's how it works. That hormone gets higher as pregnancy progresses. So chances are I will regardless of, of what I'm eating. But if I weren't eating this way, it would be a whole lot worse. So for breakfast, I am having um, two egg bites. Let's see if I can show you these without spilling them. These are the sous vide Starbucks copycat egg, instant pot egg bites. I'll leave a link um, right here and then also down below to a recipe I have for them. This is, these are bacon and cheese. So two of those, 
there's um, cottage cheese in there as well. So that really ups the protein in addition to the eggs, obviously. And then I am, this is like my treat for the day. Um, I am a sweet breakfast eater. And this is a dark chocolate peanut butter protein bar from Aldi. It's the Millville brand. It has 10 grams of protein and the carbs are 18 grams. There are 18 grams of carbs, total carbs. Um, we don't do net carbs with gestational diabetes when you are paying attention to your carbs. So this is um, okay for me in the mornings. It might not be okay, it might be a little bit too many carbs for other people, but I have been able to get away with a protein bar with 18 grams of carbs, as well as um, some, some egg bites or another protein for breakfast. And then I have my decaf coffee with with sugar-free creamer and stevia. So that is what I'm going to enjoy for breakfast and I will be back in a couple hours after I take my blood sugar for another low-carb snack. Now that I have my blood sugar taken for breakfast, um, 108, that's good. Has to be under 120 for me. Um, I believe that is an accepted value. Um, so most people should be around, or you know, should be similar, um, or have the similar goal. Although it does change, and it has changed from the past. So um, it depends on when you're watching this. I eat every couple hours. Um, so now it's time for a snack. And I'm going to have a cheese stick. Um, I believe it's Monterey Jack. Cheddar and cheddar or Colby Jack maybe. Cheese stick. And then I'm going to have one of these um, turkey sausages. These are from Aldi's. They're really, really good. They have less than one carb per stick. And um, they're turkey so they have a lot less fat. They also have uh, beef ones I believe if you are into the turkey. And then a little, a small handful of almonds. I won't eat all of these. I'll probably eat more of these um, later in the day or on my way home. And then a water. So this will hold me over. It's 10 o'clock. I'm on my um, morning break. So I'm going to eat this and then I'll eat again at lunchtime in a couple hours. So this will get me by until then and it's um, low carb snack. All right, it is 12 o'clock and I'm ready for lunch. So I have um, this little meal prep container. I got these off of Amazon. Uh, I'll try and link the ones that I got below. I like to use these every once in a while. Then I also have the ones that are not separated. But I have a side salad with shredded cheese, um, grape tomatoes, 1% fat cottage cheese. Um, then I have my favorite salad dressing, the light version, um, Western, Western French dressing. And then I only had a few left. I used the rest of the bag of these, excuse me, of these, um, Parmesan crisps. I get these at all these too. These are not my favorite, but they do offer a little crunch when you, you know, might want a cracker with your salad. Um, it's just, they have that sort of pungent, Parmesan cheese taste. So if you really like Parmesan, you'll love these. But I got these at all these. You can find them at other places, I'm sure. And then, of course, my um, water. And then I'm going to eat this probably in 10 minutes or so. And then I'm going to go on a walk because exercise is very important to help keep your blood sugars low when you are trying to keep your gestational diabetes on track. So I'm going to eat this salad and then go for a walk. All right, so I 
I took my blood sugar and it was really good um, after my lunch and my little bit of exercise there. So now I have um, an apple from the tree in our yard and they're really, really good this year and some peanut butter. So I'm going to have um, apple with some peanut butter for my afternoon snack and then water, of course. Um, lots and lots of water and here in a little bit I am taking off the rest of the afternoon to go get my hair done so um, I will be back with my snack for the ride home all right I am out of the hair salon and I got my hair cut and look how much shorter it is and I love it and it's darker fall not that it's fall weather at all but um, be shorter and a little more manageable for post baby I'm already messing it up but anyway I'm ready for a snack it's 518 and I'm going to have a snack usually I have a snack when I get home from uh, work um, so this is about the similar time so I'm going to have yogurt this is um, light and fit Greek yogurt, original Greek, 80 calories, and it is the flavor cherry cheesecake. This is a new one that I just got, and um, it's pretty good. So usually I'm kind of picky about yogurt. I want them to be, you know, no sugar added, and um, a little, I'm a little more picky, but hey, I can't find the, oh, because I got this in a four pack, so it says the nutritional information on the carton, but um, this has enough protein in it that it offsets the carbs and I don't have an issue issue with eating yogurt. So I'm going to eat this real quick, carefully on my way home and then it will be time for supper here in an hour and a half or so. All right, supper time. It is 6.44 and... I like to eat usually a little bit before this, but I had my hair appointment, so I got home a little late. So this is cauliflower pizza casserole. You can see the cauliflower in here. It's roasted cauliflower in place of your starchy carb with mozzarella cheese, turkey pepperoni, and then also some um, low sugar pizza sauce. So you can add whatever toppings you want to this. I should have added some, added some, excuse me, some onion, um, but I didn't. Next time I make it, I'll add some more toppings. But it's just roasted cauliflower in the oven with some Italian seasoning, and then I like to mix an egg in with my pizza sauce so that it thickens up and doesn't get all runny. And then the mozzarella cheese, and you can, you know, add some different types of cheeses too, if you like, and then the turkey pepperoni. So let me know if you want to see a video on how I make this. It's really easy, and it actually is really good. You get your pizza fix. You've got the vegetables, the cheese, a little bit of protein from the turkey pepperoni, and it really doesn't taste that bad. And then for my beverage tonight, I'm going to have one of these sparkling ices, um, orange mango flavor. So that is what's for dinner. And then I don't know whether or not I will have a nighttime snack or a bedtime snack or not. With gestational diabetes, it is sometimes advised. Well, it is advised for me in particular because I have um, a, a high intolerance at nighttime so if I have a bedtime snack that helps with the uh, body thinking it's starving at night and you know gives me a little bit of uh, food in my stomach so it will help my fasting blood sugar numbers all right it is 8:50. my alarm went off at 8:47 to take my blood sugar so we have one more blood sugar test for the night and then bedtime snack and then bedtime. Well, insulin and then bedtime. So I'm going to take my blood sugar real quick and 
Then my bedtime snack is going to be a couple to a few tablespoons of peanut butter. Um, peanut butter has been a snack that I have not had an issue with. Even peanut butter that has a little bit of sugar in it hasn't been a problem for me. Um, I believe because of the amount of protein. So having protein with carbs definitely helps and has helped me. So it's 103. So that's really good. 103. So I'll get this cleaned up. And I'm going to have a couple tablespoons of this peanut butter. It's going to be great. And then I am going to get ready for bed. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that anyone out there with gestational diabetes or just diabetes in general might get some inspiration on some snacks or um, lunches or dinners that might be new to try. If you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope you stick around and hit the like and subscribe buttons and the little bell notification to get notified when I post a new video. And if you guys have any favorite low carb snacks or meals, please don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments below because I still have quite a ways to go. Five or six weeks of low carb, high protein diet. So I need some more ideas. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!